World Championship football game is on the air. Yes, it's time to enjoy life with Miller High Life, the beer that's acclaimed the national champion of quality as the Miller Brewing Company of Milwaukee and their coast-to-coast -coast family of Miller High Life dealers and distributors bring you today's championship battle between the Detroit Lions and the Cleveland Browns. And this is Earl Gillespie speaking from Municipal Stadium here in Cleveland, Ohio, where this afternoon we're all set for one of the great and thrilling sports attractions of the year, the battle for the National Football League title. And for the fifth straight year, Coach Paul Brown leads in his Cleveland Browns. They won the title back in 1950. Since then, they have still got to regain that championship. On the other hand, the third straight affair for the Detroit Lions in the championship struggle, and they are going after an unprecedented third straight championship in pro football. This game is being carried by over 500 mutual stations, Armed Forces Radio, Alaska, and into Hawaii. The temperature here in Cleveland this afternoon is 53 degrees. Overcast skies with broken clouds, we see some big patches of blue, and it's a very surprising day because just last Sunday, in the last game of the regulation season for these two teams, they battled it out in a snowstorm with a temperature down to the low 20s. Today it is 53 with the overcast skies. The wind will be a negligible factor this afternoon. It's out of the west at five miles per hour. And our radio booth is located on the south side of the playing field. We are on about the 40-yard line. The field runs east and west. And at this very moment, the Cleveland Browns starting lineup is being introduced. Just a few seconds ago, the defending world champions were introduced. Buddy Parker's Detroit Lions. We have the starting lineup, so quickly here they are for the Lions visiting here at Municipal Stadium today. At left end, Darrell Brewster. At left tackle, Lou Groza. The left guard is Abe Gribben. The center is Frank Katsky. At right guard, Chuck Noel. The right tackle is Johnny Sandusky. And the right end, the veteran Danny Lavelli. In the backfield, the peerless passer, Otto Gray, on the quarterback. At left half, rookie, Chet Hanulak. At fullback, Morris Bassett. And the right halfback is Billy Reynolds. Lou Groza kicks from left to right to the defending world champion, Detroit Lions. Earl Gillespie. The opening whistle. This championship game is underway. Goes a boost. It's high and it's end over end. Christensen and Gerard, the deep men. It's Jack Christensen, number one, the five. Cutting to his right now to the 10 to the 15-yard line. Hit on the 15 and dropped down at about the 18-yard line by Chuck Knoll. Lane it's over the Cleveland defense. First and 10 for the Detroit Lions. The spin, the fake, the handoff this time and up the middle. Going across to the 30, the 35, the 40, the 45, and down across the midfield, down to the 40, and finally pulled down from behind on the 33-yard line by Tommy James was Lou Carpenter. A great run that time. Or rather, Bill Bowman, the rookie from William & Mary, right up the middle on a trap play, and he found the daylight, and there is one of the sensational runs on the very first play from scrimmage out here in Cleveland, Ohio, this afternoon. First and ten for the Detroit Lions down on the Cleveland 33-yard line. Luke Walker flanked wide to the left. The right end, Chuck Gerard has split about ten yards. Bobby Lane pitches out this time. A fumble in the backfield recovered by Cleveland. And picking up the football now and running with the ball is Johnny Kessel on the left tackle. But the whistle had blown. A pitch out that time from the quarterback Bobby Lane was followed in the backfield. And it was the big left tackle of Coach Paul Brown, Cleveland Browns, Johnny Kissel of Boston College, who fell on that loose pigskin. First and ten, and there is a break for Cleveland. Now let's see the Browns can capitalize. One of the great players in the history of pro football, the very fine quarterback, Otto Graham, says he is playing his last pro football game today. Out comes Cleveland, first and ten, on its own 37-yard line. Graham is the quarterback. Otto has his end split about five yards. Graham looking over the Detroit defense. Otto Graham is back to pass. He looks, he throws, it's deflected. Intercepted by Joe Schmidt on the 45, down to the 40-yard line. Joe Schmidt is falling down to about the 35. What a rousing start out here in Municipal Stadium today. A fumble, then a pass interception. And that was a great catch by Joe Schmidt in his second year with Detroit from the University of Pittsburgh. The pass was partially deflected on the line of scrimmage. And Schmidt reaching over his right shoulder, grabbed the ball at about the 47, and rolled down to the Cleveland 35. First and 10 for the Lions. Straight tee formation of the backfield. Judd Gerard, the right end, set out about 10 yards. Lane fakes a handoff to Joe Walker, back to pass. He throws a looper down here for Dorn Dibble. He dropped the ball down the five-yard line. 
incomplete. Devil had a clear shot for a TD that time, down to the five, off his right shoulder. Calling him out that time was the veteran Tommy James of Ohio State. Lane brings his team up to the line of scrimmage here on the 35-yard line. Second down, 10 yards to go. Plank wide to the left is Doak Walker. Back to pass lane. He's running wide. He throws a screen that is complete to Carpenter, but he is cut from behind. A very fine tackle by Johnny Kessel. That time it was Carpenter on a screen pass. He rolled down for three yards at third and seven as he moved down to the 32-yard line. And that was an ankle-high tackle by Johnny Kessel. Wide right to the left is Walker on a third down and seven. He's back to pass, or rather Bobby Lane back to pass because he's going to run. He's down to the 30, and he is pulled down on the Cleveland 28-yard line. Glenn Ford on the bottom of the pile, getting up now. Helped out by Don Colo, the captain of Cleveland. So now we have that big down coming up for Cleveland, and they send in a possible kicking unit down here on the Cleveland 28-yard line. It's going to be an attempted field goal. And trying will be Dope Walker. Bobby Lane holding on the 36-yard line. The ball is snapped. The boot is up in the air. This one is end over end. It is... What is it? We're waiting now for the signal. It is not good. It is not good. End over end. Slightly off to the left. It is good. Finally, the uh, signal from the officials. The kick is good enough, makes the score Detroit 3, the Cleveland Browns nothing. As it was recovered by John Kissel, and then a pass interception. Earl, Jim Martin kicking off for the Detroit Lions. It comes down, and it's taken here on the 15-yard line by Billy Reynolds to the 20, the 25, the 30. He breaks into the clear. He might go. He's to the 45, the 50, and they catch up to him. Pull him down on the Detroit 41. There was a sensational... He kind of that kick off by Billy Reynolds in his second year from the University of Pittsburgh. And the Cleveland Browns storm right back now. They have moved into Detroit territory down on the 41-yard line. Ball is 20 yards in from the far side of the playing field. Cleveland is moving to our right. Field runs east and west. Wind to the back. Play T formation in the backfield. Second down, 12 yards to go. A loss of two that time by Bassett as he tried to turn his right end. Otto Graham dropping back to pass. Looks downfield. He throws a long looper down here and into the clear and down into the end zone goes. Ray Renfro for the touchdown. looping pass from Otto Graham to his left halfback, Ray Renfro, who had gotten behind the two pass defenders on about the seven-yard line, and it was easy for Ray to scoot in the end zone. The score is 6-3 to three in favor of the Cleveland Browns. And now, Lou Vitell Groza will try for the extra point. Holding is Tommy James. James kneeling down to the nine-yard line. There it is. The ball is placed. The boot is up in the air. This one is good. And so the score stands. Cleveland 7, the Detroit Lions 3. Flanker wide to the left this time is Doak Walker. Bobby Lane calling signals at quarterback. Quick count. He's back to pass. Looking downfield. He's going to get hit. He throws. And this one is complete to Devil on the 35, the 40. And Devil is caught and dropped down on the Detroit 40-yard line by Walt Michaels. Walt Michaels helped out by Len Ford. Defensive end who dropped back that time. Complete to Dorn Devil. And that guy has real shifty feet. He can really move out there. Bobby Lane on first and 10 of the 41, and a quick uh, handoff to Hunchmeyer. Pounds his way over his right tackle to approximately the 45-yard line. We have seven minutes and five seconds remaining in this first quarter. The score is 7-3 in favor of Cleveland. They have the ball on their own 43-yard line. Flanker to the left. This time is Doak Walker. Lane again. This time he fakes. He comes out on the option series, and he's hit behind the line of scrimmage by Tommy Catlin. Stepped back on the 40-yard line and helped out by the rookie from the University of Texas, Carlton Massey. It'll be Judd Girard in punt formation. Girard, a product of the University of Wisconsin, is standing on the 25-yard line. Fourth down, 11 yards to go for the Lions. The snap from center. Girard has plenty of time, gets off a high spiral, wobbly, and a fair catch is being signaled for, taken by Reynolds here on the 23-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Browns. 
straight T formation. The ends in tight. Otto Graham back to pass. Drifts back to the 13. He is hit by Gandy. Gets away from Sherwin. Gandy gets away from another Detroit Lion. He's to the 15. He's going to run to the 20. The 25. The 30 down the sideline. And he steps out of bounds. That time Otto Graham got away from the eagerly searching hands of Sherwin Gandy, number 85, and also number 72, the rookie from Murray State, left tackle Gil Main. Great T formation. Otto Graham calling signals. Otto Graham dropping back to pass. He's back to the 35. He throws one down here, and it's intercepted beautifully and drops out of bounds. And let's see if they call it. It is a, an interception. An interception. There was a great play by Jack Christensen as he caught the ball. He was trying to stop his momentum from carrying him out of bounds. And as he tried to hold himself up, he dropped the football and rolled out of bounds. And so did he, but it's an intercepted forward pass. So the Detroit Lions stopped that threat and they take over. Mixed emotions out here this afternoon. Have it called an interception. Wide to the left goes Dope Walker, first and ten. On the 35, a pass downfield is intercepted this time by the Cleveland Browns. On the 35 by Don Paul. He's down. He might go all the way now. He's the 15, the 10. He gets down inside the 10 and is finally caught. On the 8-yard line, Don Paul. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Paul football at its finest. Real thrills every minute. Ball on the 10-yard line of Detroit in Cleveland's possession. Out come the Browns. Wide to the right this time is Danny Lavelli. Flanker set to the left. Otto Graham back to pass. Looks down. He throws a quickie over the line. It's complete on the three-yard line into the end zone. Goes the Cleveland Brown. I believe that was Darrell Bluster. It was. A bullet pass from quarterback Otto Graham. Complete to his left end. Darrell Bruce threw a cup of the ball and was hit hard on the three-yard line. He crawled into the end zone. So the score is now 13-3 in favor of the Browns. Boy, this Cleveland ball club is striking back with a vengeance out here today. Lou Groves is trying for the extra point. Tommy James is holding. Ball is snapped. It's placed. The boot is up in the air. This one is... The kick is good. And so the score stands. Cleveland 14 and the point three. Fans, remember the name, Miller Highline, your host for today's game. Renfro and Billy Reynolds, or Hanulak and Reynolds, are back in the double safety. Here is the boot by Gerard. A low kick is taken here on the 45-yard line by Reynolds to the 50. Down to the 45, he goes down the sideline, down to the 35, down to the 30, the 20, the 15, and he is finally caught on the 12-yard line by the booter, Judd Gerard. This boy, Billy Reynolds, has already proved to be a shining star here in this championship game in 1954. A great punt return that again puts Cleveland deep in Detroit territory, down on the 12-yard line, and the last possible man to get him was the punter, Gerard, and he caught him around the knees and pulled him down. Renfro wide to the left, the left end is split about five yards, Otto Graham hands off to Bassett, he skirts off his right tackle, Goes down inside the 10, the 5, and he has caught him a 4. Laverne Torgerson pulling him down finally. Helped out by the secondary, Jack Christensen moving in. As Bassett slanted off his right tackle and moved down to the 4-yard line. There is the gun ending the first quarter of the championship classic. Cleveland Browns, 14, and the Detroit Lions, 3. Otto Graham has a flanker set to the left. Otto Graham calling signals now at quarterback. Graham on a quarterback sneak, goes into the end zone. <laughs> well, after the football game that Mr. Otto Graham is displaying out here this afternoon, there's going to be a lot of talking, I think, in that Cleveland Brown front office to try to get out of the changes mind about retiring from this great game of pro football. Now trying with the extra point is Lou Grozis holding his Tommy James. They're all set to go. Waiting for the snap from center. The ball is placed. The boot is up in the air. This one is good. The kick is good. And so the score now stands. 
Cleveland, 21. The Big Point Lions, 3. Cleveland has other ideas. Bobby Lane hands off this time to Carpenter. He gets into the secondary. The 35, the 40. Carpenter might go all the way. One man has a chance, and he grabs him on the 35 and pulls him down inside that 30. On about the 28-yard line. And there was a sudden burst of speed by the white halfback, Lou Carpenter. He was pulled down finally by Don Paul, the only boy who had a chance to get him. Here on the 28-yard line at first and 10 for the Lions. And the Lions roar right back. It is fourth down, four yards to go. And the Lions come out. They're going to try for that first down. They are not going for the field goal. Turning by 18 points. Fourth and four. Bobby Lane uh, pitches out to Doak Walker around the left side of the line. Down to the 20. He goes. Down to the 15. Goes that great clutch. Ball player and he's pulled down. Picked up the first and ten. And there was one of the great clutch players in the game today. The pitch back that time went from the quarterback Bobby Lane to his halfback Doak Walker. As he turned his left end, he found the alley open for the first down as he moved inside the 15-yard line down to the 14-yard line. As they break the huddle, Lane sends Gerard wide to the right and Dorn wide to the left. Bobby Lane calling signals. Pitches out this time. Whoa, and a beautiful tackle back here on the 22-yard line. He pitched out to his fullback. Bowman who was hit behind the line of scrimmage by Tommy Catlin who shut the gap and really dropped him down. Third and 18, flanker to the right, Gerard. Bobby Lane is dropping back to pass, looks downfield, he throws up the middle, this one is caught by Devil, he's dropped down to the five-yard line. A beautiful leaping stab and a great catch by Dorn Devil. He was hit down immediately by Tommy James and Tom Catlin. And it's close enough to call for the chain gang, and out they go. This might be a first down inside the 5 oh, wait. They're stretching out the tape. It is short by about 6 inches. Fourth down, 6 inches to go on the 4-yard line. A pitch out to Bowman. Bowman to the 5, the 4, the 3. Into the end zone goes Bill Bowman, the fullback. They needed six inches for the first and goal, and Bowman went all the way, four and a half yards into the end zone between his left end and his left tackle. And the score is now 21 to 9 in favor of the Cleveland Browns. Trying with the extra point is Doak Walker, holding his Bobby Lane. The Lions are poised. The snap from center of the ball placed the boot is up in the air. This one, the kick is good, and so the score now stands at Cleveland 21. And the Detroit Lions, 10. To punt formation goes Horace Gillum. Gillum is standing on the Cleveland 23-yard uh, line. Snap from center. Takes plenty of time. He gets off a high, wobbly spiral and calling for a fair catch is Gerard on the 18-yard line. First and 10 for the Lions. We have nine minutes remaining in this First half here at Municipal Stadium, Cleveland, Ohio, on the shores of Lake Erie. Flank to the left this time is Gerard. Back to pass his lane. He throws out the right flat, complete to Carpenter. He tries to cut. He slips, moves across the line of scrimmage to about the 24-yard line. Stopped out there by number 24, Warren Lahr, and number 82, Carlton Massey. Pass complete in the right flat behind the line of scrimmage to the right halfback, Lou Carpenter who made it up to the Detroit 24-yard line. We're at second down and approximately five yards to go. Detroit huddles back in the 15. Flanked right of the left this time is Gerard. Here is the quarterback, Bobby Lane. Looking over, taking plenty of time right now. He pitches out to Bowman around the left side. Bowman across the line of scrimmage up to the 30-yard line, and he's hit very hard. Bill Bowman on a sweep around his left end was hit by Walt Michaels. And Don Colo on the Detroit 30-yard line, just across the 30, where it is good for the first and 10. First down, 10 yards to go. Cleveland has an 11-point lead. The score is 21 to 10 as we play midway in the second quarter. 
and a lot more thrills coming your way before this afternoon is over. Plank wide to the left once again is Gerard. The quick cut, the handoff this time goes to Carpenter off his left guard. He comes up for maybe five yards as he's dropped down on the 35-yard line. On the bottom is John Paul. Plank to the left. The right end dibble is set out about 10 yards. Bobby Lane calling the signals. Lane in a quick, he's trying to throw a pass. The ball is knocked out of his hand, stolen away by Cleveland. Mike McCormick stole the football from Bobby Lane and the Browns take over on the Detroit 31-yard line. Great defensive maneuver by Mike McCormick, the rookie from Kansas University. They line up in a straight T formation, no flankers. The ends are in tight. Second down, seven on the 28. The fake by Graham. He rolls out of the pocket in the bootleg. He's back to pass throws, and it is fourth four, and it's, in, it's taken by Cleveland on the eight-yard line. Three men handle that football. And the boy who hung out of the pigskin was Ray Renfro after it was knocked out of the hands of Daryl Bluster by Jack Christensen. Ball was hit up into the air and it was taken out of the air beautifully by Renfro. And his first and goal to go for the Browns down to the seven yard line. There was a break and now let's see if the Browns can capitalize on that break. Otto Graham at quarterback now. Cleveland Browns deep in Detroit territory. Here is Otto Graham rolling out of the pocket to his right. He's getting away now. He's out of the five. He hurdles over into the end zone for a touchdown. What a day Otto Graham is having this afternoon. That's his second touchdown of the afternoon. The score is now 27 to 10 in favor of the Cleveland Browns over the favored and defending National Football League champion Detroit Lions. Lou Grozer will try for the extra point with Tommy James holding. Waiting for the snap from center. There it is. The ball is placed. The boot is up there. And the kick is good. And so the score stands. Cleveland, 28. The Detroit Lions, 10. Doug Gerard is the right end. Dorn Dibble the left end. Bobby Lane back to pass on second down. Looks, he throws a sideliner, completes to Gerard, and Gerard gets, tries to get away, but he is stopped here on the 33, 34 yard line. Where it is good for the first down. Bobby Lane to his right end, Doug Gerard. Now they say that Gerard was stopped on the 32 yard line. First down 10 for the Detroit Lions with a score Cleveland 28 and Detroit 10. Three minutes and 35 seconds remain in the first half. Wide to the left goes Doak Walker. Bobby Lane, a quarterback, looks back. He steps back a couple of steps, throws out here. It's complete to Walker. He spins away from one man, but he can't. He gets up to the 40-yard line. It's pushed back to the 38. He spun away from one Cleveland pass defender. But was hit as he uh, moved out for yardage on the 40-yard line. And they say that he crossed the 40 to the 41. Third down and six for the Detroit Lions on their own 37-yard sure. line. And number 37, Walker, set wide that? to the left. Gerard set up about 10 yards to the right. Here is Bobby Lane back to pass. He throws out here. This one is caught. It's stolen away by Walt Michaels down to 45, down to the 40. Walt Michaels down to the 35 and it's caught to the 31. Larceny out here today. That ball was stolen by Walt Michaels. And Cleveland once again is deep in Detroit territory this time on the 31 yard line. First down and 10. 28 to 10 is the score. The Browns are pounding now, trying for another score. The Browns this year allowed only 42% of the opposition's passes to be completed. Let's see what the Browns can do against the Lions. It's 28 to 10. Ball on the 31-yard line. Detroit 31. Here is Cleveland out of the tunnel. First down 10. Otto Graham back to pass. Looking downfield. He throws a long looper down here to Renfro. He's got it. A beautiful catch in the end zone. There was one of the 
great catches we have had the experience to witness this year. Ray Renfro, the left halfback from North Texas State, down full speed inside the five-yard line. Had gotten behind the Detroit pass defense. He leaned over, tucked the ball below his knees, raced into the end zone to make the score 34 to 10. Throws it trying for the extra point. Tommy James holding the ball snap place. The boot is up there. And the kick is good. And that makes the score. Cleveland, 35. The Detroit Lions, 10. Chuck Gerard is set wide to the right. The quarterback, Bobby Lane, is dropping back the pass, looking downfield. He's being rushed. No, he hasn't got much time. He throws to Walker on the 35, the 40. Walker to the 45 across the midfield. He's down to the 40, down to the 35, and he steps out of bounds on the 35-yard line. Once again, this time it was Doak Walker being used as a safety precaution. Out of the right flat, behind the line of scrimmage, Lane, who was almost hit, threw out of the right flat to Walker, and he traveled down that sideline can really move and was finally uh, helped out of bounds on the 35 of Cleveland where it's first and 10 for Detroit. One minute and 30 seconds remaining in the first half. Back again the pass is Lane. Bobby's looking down. He throws here a sideliner, completes to Gerard. He is dumped on the 29-yard line and he was hit very hard by number 24, Warren Lahr. And that time we had to wait until Lahr turned around because his Back is all muddy. Timeout is called by the Detroit Lions, and that stops the clock at 1 minute and 15 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And Chris, I think out here this afternoon that the amazing part of it is that these Cleveland Browns, who have lost eight consecutive games to the Detroit Lions, look so much more powerful, and that's because of the score, 35 to 10. But this, I think, is going to be a wide-open football game all the way. Well, there are the Cleveland Browns who started out rather slow in the 1954 National Football League season, as we saw them play many times, have certainly come along into a beautifully molded together club. And with Paul Brown at the helm, his line, defensive line, had topped the National Football League in stopping the opposition's rushing or running game. And that's what they're doing here today. And of course, Bobby Lane is having a lot of trouble getting enough time to throw accurate forward passes because of the crashing ends on the right side, Lynn Ford, the 250-pound uh, All-American from the University of Michigan, and the rookie from the University of Texas on the left side of the defensive line, Carlton Massey. Lane has thrown many more passes than Otto Graham this afternoon, but Mr. Graham, who has thrown three touchdown passes, has uh, been a little bit more on the accurate side, has gotten tremendous blocking in the pocket. Unofficially, the statistics that we have, Bobby Lane for Detroit has completed a total of nine passes in 17 tries, while Otto Graham has thrown seven, completing four, three of them for TDs. It's 35 to 10 with only a minute and 15 seconds remaining in the first half of play on a beautiful football afternoon. Second down and 10 on the Cleveland 24-yard line. Here's a quick pass. It's complete to Gerard. Gerard on the 15. Fumbles the ball as a big fight for the football. On the 15-yard line, let's see how he cover that big skin. <laughs> Cleveland Browns take over. Stopping another deep play threat. Pass is complete. Bobby Lane to Judd Gerard. He was moving quickly to his left and he was hit from behind from the blind side and was dropped down. He lost the football. Recovered by Cleveland on the 15-yard line where it's now a first and 10 for the Browns. And there is the gun ending the first half of this World Championship game with a score standing. The Cleveland Browns, 35. The Detroit Lions, 10. Stay tuned for our special halftime guest immediately following this friendly word from your host. Chet Hanulak, the rookie from University of Maryland, are back in turn safety on about their own eight. It is Jim Martin who is out there teeing up the ball on his own 40, about to kick off. This is for the world title in professional football, and here again is Earl Gillespie. The opening kickoff of the second half by Martin. It's end of Wren coming down, taken on the 10-yard line by Billy Reynolds. He cuts to, the, to his left to the 20, gets away from one man to the 25, and now he's hit here on the 26-yard line, drops down to the 27. And the kicker that time, Jim Martin, was the boy who brought him down, helped out by Gil Maine. 
And number 70, the rookie from California, Gerald Perry. First down and 10 for the Cleveland Browns. Again, that kickoff brought back by the uh, high-stepping Mr. Billy Reynolds of the University of Pittsburgh. First down and 10 for the Cleveland Browns on their 31-yard line. Otto Graham calling the signal, spins, he hands off this time, and it's passed up the middle for about three yards, and he's pushed back to the line of scrimmage. Wide to the right this time goes Billy Reynolds, Otto Graham on second down and seven yard line. Graham back to pass. He looks, he there. throws the left flat, completes the back on the 35, the 40. Ooh, he is hit hard and drops down here on the 43 yard line. Pass on the left flat. Completes the pass at behind the line of scrimmage. He was hit by Bob Miller. And Les Bigelman helped out by number 20, the rookie from UCLA, Bill Stitt. Back to pass, Graham, he's going to run now. He moves off to his left side and is hit on the line of scrimmage and pushed across the 45, dropped down on the 46-yard line. The quarterback in a straight T formation, Graham fakes. He's back to pass, being rushed now. He gets away from one man who was going to hit him back for about a 15-yard loss. Throws a long one down to Darrell Brewster. It's going to be a fight for the ball. And Darrell Brewster caught number seven. A beautiful catch. Darrell Brewster went up between Joe Walker and Jimmy David. Brother, that was a smooth pass. As smooth as variable pitch kind of flow passes that record Buick power back to the rear wheels. Graham, first down on the four-yard line. Otto Graham and the quarterback sneak goes under the three, the two, the one, and is he in or not? Otto Graham is playing for his third quarter, his third touchdown of the afternoon. The uprights were shaking that time as a lot of the pro football players banged and they were trying to stop Otto Graham. And where did he go? He went down to about the six-inch line where it's second down. Otto Graham, quarterback, speaks, and he's into the end zone for the score. And Mr. Cleveland Brown, Otto Graham, has scored his third touchdown today. The score is now 41-10 to 10 in favor of Cleveland. Lou Groza will try for the extra point. Ball is snapped, it's placed, the boot is up in the air. This one is good, and the score is now. Cleveland, 42. The Detroit Lions, 10. Flanker to the left, Jug Gerard once again. Here is Lane, back to pass. He looks, he throws up the middle. This one is intercepted. Intercepted by Kenny Conn on the 30, the 25, the 10, and he is caught finally outside the 10-yard line. He was caught at about the 12. Intercepting that Bobby Lane pass on the 30-yard line and moving it down to the Detroit 13, where it's going to be a first down and 10 for the Browns. Otto Graham, the quarterback, looking over that Detroit defense, a seven-man line. Here's a pitch out going wide to the former Chicago Bear Morris, and he's down to the five, all the way for the score. time that Fred Curley Morrison, a product of Ohio State, has carried the pigskin today. He made it count, a 12-yard gallop around his right end into the end zone. The score is now 48 to 10 in favor of Cleveland. Throws a trying for another extra point. Tommy James holding. The ball is snapped, it's placed, the boot is up in the air. This one is good. And it's now the Cleveland Browns 49, the Detroit Lions 10, getting all set for the next kickoff. And while we wait, here is Mr. Chris Schenkel. One for Lion fans. As the Browns have really rolled, let's see what the Lions can do with the Groza kickoff going from right to left. Earl? The deep men are Duke Walker and Judd Girard. Here is the advance, the boot by Lou Groza. This one is end over end. It's not going too deep. Girard is coming out to the five, the six-yard line. He grabs the football. 
to the 10, the 15, the 20, cutting to his right now. He gets away from one man trying to cut back. He gets across the 25, spins, and has dropped down. And Dablinski sends Gerard wide to the left. He splits his right end. Here's the quarterback, Dablinski, back to pass. He's looking downfield. He's going to run now. He tucks the football. Now he's going to throw, and he's going to get hit. He is pulled down by Carlton Matthew back on the nine-yard line. Tom Dablinski was running around in that backfield, and he couldn't find anybody clear. He was going to run, then he was going to pass. Took too much time to make up his mind, and Massey dropped him down back on the nine-yard line. 49 to 10, the Lions are trailing. The, the second down, 25 in the nine-yard line. Flanker to the left, here is Dablinski back on the three-yard line. He throws out here a sideline, and it's caught by Jimmy, I think it's Dorr. No, it's Jeb Gerard. He was dropped down here on the 28-yard line. Up out of bounds by number 24, Warren Lahr. Pass complete from Tom Dublinski to Jug Gerard. And Jug was dropped down on the 27, the 27-yard line. In punt formation goes Jug Gerard. Gerard is standing on the 12, waiting for the pass from center. There's the pass, and Gerard gets his boot away. This is a low kick, twisting down, hitting down to the 35, rolls down to the 30, to the 25, picked up by Kahn, and he is hit in his tracks on the 20-yard line, first and 10 for Cleveland. Second down, 13 yards to go on their own 17-yard line, a pitch out this time to Morrison around the right side of the line. He circles his end, moves across the 15, uh, the 20, and is hit at about the 22-yard line by Jimmy David. Flanker set wide to the right by Otto Graham. A seven-man line for the Detroit Lions. Here is Graham back to pass, looking downfield. It's batted in the air. This one is caught, and it's dropped. Caught and dropped on the 27-yard line by a Cleveland Brown. And it is a completed forward pass. But it's fourth down five now, and back into a double safety, Jug Girard and Doak Walker. Into a punt formation goes Horace Gillum. There's the pass from center. Gillum has plenty of time. Here's his boot. A wobbly kick, not too deep, hitting on the 45 of Detroit, rolling down to the 40. Rolls down to the 35, down to the 30-yard line. Finally, it rolls down on the 28. There was a tremendous roll in favor of the Cleveland Browns. And there is a flag on this play. Flank to the left this time is Dorn. Back to pass. The handoff this time on a reverse goes to Carpenter around the left side of the line. He's across the line of scrimmage, but he is hit down on the 29-yard line. Flanker to the left. Dorn. Gerard set wide to the right. Here's the quarterback, Dublinski, faking a pass. He throws out the right side, complete to Carpenter. He gets away from one man now across the 30 to 35. Is still going and is hit on the 40-yard line by Kenny Kahn. Kahn's really smashed into Luke Carpenter. And now we have a lot of excitement back here on the 23-yard line as a few of the players are mixing it up. Second down and nine. There were two penalties on the play. One offset the other, and it was second nine for the Detroit Lions. The quarterback, Tom Dublinski, handing off and circling wide that time was Carpenter. He moved across the 35-yard line to the 36. Gerard set to the right. Dublinski at quarterback spins. Hands off to Carpenter once again. A flag on the play as Carpenter picks up the first and ten as he goes across the 40. Carpenter was hit. Brought down on the 41-yard line of Detroit. Flanker to the left. The right end set out ten yards. Tom Dublinski at quarterback fakes. He's back to pass. He's going to get hit. He gets away from one man. He's going to run. He's across the 45 and has dropped down to the 46-yard line. A lot of fierce tackling taking place out here today. Here is Bobby Lane in a quick count. Back to pass. Goes out the right flat. Complete to the right halfback. Carpenter away from one man on the 50-yard line. He's caught from behind and pulled down on the Cleveland 45-yard line where it's a first and 10. Third down, 10 yards to go. Cleveland's ball, or rather Detroit's ball on the Cleveland 30. Third down, 10. Here comes that possession down and back to pass is Bobby Lane looking downfield. Throws out here and it's caught by Dilley's drop down. Or was that the Doker? 
Lauren Devil was the boy who caught the ball, and he was upended and dropped down on the Cleveland 17, 18-yard line. First and 10 on the 18-yard line. Lane, back to pass, throws out the right flat to Carpenter. He tries the cut, and he slips and falls. Back on the 18, 19-yard line. Hit by Tommy Catlin. Second down, 11 yards to go. There was a loss of a yard on the play. The ball is back on the 19-yard line. Lane dropping back to pass, being rushed. Throws a short screen that is complete to Carpenter, looking for his interference now. He cuts, brought down once. He gets up the gully. He's down inside the 15-yard line, and he's down to the 12. Green pass complete to Lou Carpenter. Tackled by Kenny Collins. There's plenty of action down there in that playing field. Fourth down, two yards to go on the 10-yard line. A quick pass is complete to Gerard. He's on the five, and he is hit on the five. Hit by Kenny Kahn. There is the gun. Marking the end of the third quarter. Cleveland has that 49-10 lead over the defending champions of the National Football League, the Detroit Lions. So step in, Chris Schenkel. Lions in attempting to get back into the ball game after trailing at halftime. 35 to 10 have thrown a great number of passes which we'll tell you more about later right now the Lions are threatening and here's Earl first down on the six yard line uh, Bobby Lane throws down the left flat this one is intercepted by the Cleveland Browns and it's caught by Len Ford he might go all the way he's to the 30 to 35 to 40 across the midfield and he is finally caught from behind 24 took that ball out of midair a pass on the left flat which is a very dangerous pass as it is Ford grabbed it. Boy, and he really ambled. 250 pounds rolling down the field. He was caught from behind and pulled down on the 45-yard line. Graham, second down 10 on the Detroit 45-yard line. Graham hands off to Morrison. Morrison goes down to about the 42. And there might be a penalty on this last play as there are some very heated feelings between these two ball clubs who have had the opportunity to meet, you, meet each other three times in the postseason classic of pro football. And it's going to be a 15-yard penalty against Detroit for piling on. Personal foul. Otto Graham on third down eight, calling signals, sends a man in motion now. Chet Hanulak, wide to his left, the pitch out. Morrison fumbles, a loose football is recovered by Detroit. Pitch out going from the quarterback out of Graham to his fullback, Curly Morrison. He fumbled the ball, is recovered by Detroit. And on the bottom of that pile with the football is Gerald Perry. So the Lions take over. Gain of five yards, second and five on the 40. Here's a pass up the middle. This one is deflected, intercepted by Kenny Kahn on the 50. Down to the 45. He goes down to the 40, the 39. Caught by Duke Walker. Kenny Kahn. How about that one? Throws a punny this afternoon. And for the thrill of the year, sample the hot performance of the 1955 Buick. And Hanulak, the handoff goes to Hanulak on a quick opener up the middle. He goes down to the secondary, across the 20, down to the 15 yard line, down in, inside the 15. They might have caught him on that 15. And there was a great run by the rookie from the University of Maryland. We've got his tutoring from Jim Tatum down there at Maryland. Chet Hanulak. Otto Graham looking over the Detroit defense. The fans are yelling, go, go, go for these Cleveland Browns. Here's the head up to Reynolds. Reynolds pounding down to the 10, down to the 9. He's stopped by Jerry Perry. Otto Graham, the former Northwestern great, looks over that defense. This time he hands off to Hanulak. He's in the 5, and he's into the end zone. Oh, what a run. third quarter and the fourth quarter have turned this game into a complete rout. Now we'll go ahead by the amazing score of 55 to 10. Time for the extra point. Lou grows in the ball snap. This place the boot is up there. This one is good. The kick is good. The score is now Cleveland. 56. 
Detroit 10 and Chris. This is one of the most amazing football games I think I have ever seen. In the National Football League, flanker to the left once again for Detroit. Here's Bobby Lane, back to pass, being rushed. He throws a sideliner. This one is caught, and the boy who caught the ball is pulled down on the 41-yard line. Pass was complete to Dorn Dibble. First down and 10 on the 42-yard line for Detroit. Bobby Lane in a bootleg. He's back to pass. He throws. It's intercepted this time by Lenny Ford off the hands of the Detroit line. And Ford is dropped down on the Cleveland 48. Len Ford gets his second pass interception. Hear those cheers. Offside call against Cleveland is refused by the Detroit line. So it is now second down. And now... Here comes Otto Graham off. Listen to this tremendous ovation. A standing ovation for one of the great quarterbacks in the history of pro football. Peerless Otto Graham, who has announced that this is his last professional football game. George Rademan on a quarterback sneak comes up here to about the nine-yard line where he is put down. There is the gun marking the end of the 1954 National Football League Championship game. An amazing score as the Cleveland Browns overpowered the Detroit Lions, the favored Lions, 56 to 10. And here at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio, the ardent and uh, devoted Brown football fans are thrilling indeed as Cleveland, Ohio failed to bring the world title in baseball to the city today. The football Browns have done it. They have tried since 1950. This is the third time they have met the Detroit Lions, and the third time, sometimes, is always charmed. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. This is WGN, the Chicago Tribune Station, Chicago 11, serving the Middle West.